Can you tell what this is? I'll let you think about it as I explain. Recently, I've been playing with flat pack designs. These are normally reserved for 2D machines, such as laser cutters or CNC routers, but I wanted to try something here with 3D printing. I know 3D printing flat pack models may sound like a misuse of technology, but humor me for a minute. You see all these cool patterns? I didn't design these, these are all infill patterns. I basically sent these shapes to the slicer as solid bodies and then assigned different infill patterns to them. And that is what I wanted to experiment with, creating flat pack designs with cool interior infill patterns. And since Christmas is just a week away, I decided to apply this technique to an ornament. You simply have to model your slots and tabs in the right place and you quickly have a Christmas bauble. You can play around with all sorts of infill patterns, which if you didn't know, there's an entire world of patterns outside rectilinear and hexagons. In this video, I'll show how I went about designing the shapes in Fusion 360 and how I prepared the models and the slicer to print with the different patterns. One interesting aspect of this is that you don't have to print all your models with the same infill pattern. You can vary the infill pattern for each individual body on your build plate. I'll show all this in today's tutorial. Before we jump in, I just wanted to highlight my weekly Fusion 360 live class. This is my weekly class where students get live help with their designs. We meet weekly over Zoom at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Students are able to submit their questions to me ahead of time and I help them get unstuck with their designs and show the approach I would take. All the classes get recorded so that if you can't make it live, you can still access the videos and download them. I'm currently running a Christmas promotion where you can enroll for half off. Click the link below for more info. Okay, let's jump into Fusion 360 and look at the approach I took in making these flat pack Christmas ornament designs. All right, we'll begin by creating a sketch on the XY plane. I'm gonna come in with a center circle. So C for a circle, we're gonna go with 75 millimeters. Then I'm gonna start with a rectangle here. So I'm just gonna kind of create a two point rectangle there, R for rectangle. As far as the width here, I'm gonna go with three millimeters and the height, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click to place it and then I'm gonna reference the diameter of the circle here. And I'm gonna say, take that and divide it by two. And so that gives me 37.5. And that way that height of this rectangle is always linked to this diameter. All right, now to position it, I'm gonna use my midpoint constraint and select the top edge of my rectangle and click on the center of my circle. And there we have it, and we should see it should go right to the bottom or the perimeter of that circle. All right, let's create a horizontal slot here. I'm just gonna first create it, and then let's add the dimensions. I'm gonna go with the same sort of thickness there, three millimeters. Now for the length of this rectangle, I'm also gonna reference my circle here. So click that 75 diameter. I'm gonna take that and divide it by four. Okay, and that gives me my slot. All right, now I wanna position this. So let's use a uh, constraint here to position. I want the center uh, or that midpoint of that rectangle here to be aligned with my origin. So here I'm gonna grab my vertical constraint there, that horizontal slash vertical. Hold shift and grab, and you'll see you'll get that little triangle. And I'm gonna reference that to the center here or the origin. And it's gonna bring it right down. Okay, so that's locked in place. I could only move it left to right, and uh, I wanted to mention it. Here's something I actually uh, accidentally discovered. Um, you can dimension off the midpoint as well. So D for dimension, and if I hold shift and do that same trick where I hover near the middle and get that little triangle showing me the midpoint, I'm gonna click on that and then click on the center here, my origin, and you can see that it takes that dimension right to the midpoint. So that's useful to know and I just kind of stumbled. I, it was kind of one of those things I said, I wonder if this will work and it actually did. Um, now here, I'm gonna, for this dimension, I'm also gonna reference that center or that diameter there. And I'm gonna say, this is going to be that distance uh, divided by four, Hit enter, and there we go. So you'll see here 18.75 and FX showing it's a function of this diameter. And you can always see what that is by just double clicking on it. Next, we'll mirror this rectangle here to the other side. So to do that, I'll draw a line, L for a line, right off the origin, straight up. I'm gonna 
take that line, select it, hit X to make it a construction line, and then let me hit Escape to deselect it, go to Create, down to Mirror. I'm going to get my Mirror dialog box here. I'm going to double click to select my rectangle, and then I'm going to click on my Mirror Line selection here and choose that line I just made, and then click OK, and you'll see it's now mirrored to this side. Okay, that takes care of the first section for now, and let's go ahead and create the other one. So instead of redrawing everything, I'm going to copy and move this over. I'm going to select my sketch here, right click, go to move slash copy, and here I'm going to click on create copy. I'm going to take this and just drag it straight across. I'm going to enter a dimension here of 100 millimeters, and before I do anything else, I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to click on this button here that says set pivot and then click on the center there and then go back and click the check mark. All right, that's going to set my pivot uh, for rotating this because I want to rotate it 180 degrees. So I'm going to take this now and rotate it up. I'm just going to type in 180 and hit enter. Okay, now you'll notice that I copied and moved this over so everything uh, is blue so it's not constrained so I'm kind of taking some shortcuts here I could dimension everything off the origin but I'm just gonna leave this as is so we can kind of move a little quicker through this okay now we have to make a few changes here to this section and one of the things we'll need to do is put a midline here through this section of this opening and extend the rest out to the end so uh, let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna hit L for line find that midpoint there and just draw a line straight down making sure that's vertical and do the same thing on this side. All right, and now I want to extend this all the way out to the end. So I can draw a line here, just have it go out and make sure it's straight. But an easier way to do that is use your extend tool. So modify extend, and if you hover near the edge you want it to extend, it'll actually extend that line. We'll do the same thing to this side, and it'll extend it to the next sketch entity. All right, T for trim, and we're going to trim this back edge here and this line in the middle. And we'll also trim this part here, leaving that opening. Now, when you trim, you'll notice all sorts of errors that you're breaking constraints. And usually I don't do this, but I'm going to say it's okay for now. So we're just going to go ahead and ignore those errors right now and just uh, finish what we need to do here. So let's go ahead and trim this outer part, this section, and there we go. Okay, so if I measure this edge here, I wanna make sure they're both the same size. So I'll click on inspect, and from here to here, 18.72. Let's do the same thing here, inspect. So make sure 18.72, okay, so they're both the same. That's good, when you click it, you should get this sort of profile like this. All right, now we're gonna make a third section, a final section we'll need. So we're gonna do the same thing where we copy this. Uh, right click, move copy, create on, or click on create copy. And then I'm gonna take this arrow here, the up and down, move it straight down, and I'll just type in the distance here, negative 100. And I'll click okay, no need to rotate this one. Okay, the changes I'll need to make with this one include taking a line straight across here and modifying this section here. And it'll all make sense in a bit when you see how everything comes together. So let's do that. I'm going to go and grab my extend tool again. So modify down to extend. I'm just going to extend that to the edge here. And the same thing with this guy. I'm just going all the way across. And here I can even extend these. T for trim, I'm gonna trim the top of this. And now I'm gonna grab a line from the middle here and do the same idea where I'm gonna split this in half. Do it to both sides. And I need a line here to separate this slot. So let me just draw a line going across. And I'm gonna dimension this line from the top here. In this distance, I'm again going to reference this from the diameter here. So I'll click on that. I'll take that diameter and divide it by 4. And make sure that this distance goes right up to that line here going across. And here what we want to do is keep only one set of these tabs here. So these two sections end up being tabs that fit into uh, the slots here. So we need to keep one set of them in here. 
Um, we can actually use this and just print it twice uh, because if you think about the other one, it's just going to be sort of a flip the other side. Um, like I said, this all make more sense when you put it together. But what we need to know here is we're just going to keep the left side. Um, and then we can flip it the other way and it'll be the right side. So T for trim, going to trim these edges here, just keeping just that left. Same thing here, going to trim this. So then when I select it, you'll see that it's the left tab there that stays. All right, now I want this whole thing to select as one body. So I'll go ahead and trim here, or one profile, I should say. And now I get this sort of section here with the tabs on the left side. All right, one final thing I'm going to do is just put a top here to this section of the ornament here. And to do that, I'll create a rectangle here. So R for rectangle, let's say four by 15. And then I'm going to create another one. Let's make this one 7 by 10. And here I'll use my midpoint constraint here to constrain the bottom edge to the top edge of this rectangle. And let's come in with a circle here. I'll do a 3 millimeter circle. And I want this circle lined up to the center of this vertical line and this horizontal line. So I'll grab my horizontal slash vertical constraint, click on that midpoint, hold shift, find the midpoint of this line, and do the same thing again, finding the midpoint of the top line. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to double click to select this entire thing. Actually, let's just do this to highlight it all, and I'm going to move it here. And now I want to constrain it so that the center here is aligned with the center of my circle. So let's grab our a horizontal slash vertical constraint. I'm going to click on that center circle and then click on my center here of the big circle. And now you'll notice I can only move it up and down. It's constrained. And I'm just going to eyeball it here just so that it overlaps this uh, circle here. And normally I would dimension this, but I'm not too worried. This is more of a loose design here. I just want to get the idea going. All right, I'm going to leave it at that and then finish sketch. And now we get to extrude everything. So here I'm going to extrude everything three millimeters, E for extrude, select this profile. And here, here, these two rectangles. And let me select the rest. Let's go to the one on the right. We just need to click on that profile. And on the bottom, we're going to click this bottom section here. And let's go ahead and do a three millimeter extrude and click OK. OK, let's untoggle sketch and I'm going to zoom in and just give these edges here a little bit of a fillet, F for fillet, one, two, three, and four. We'll do a one millimeter fillet there and we'll click OK. OK, and you should end up with something like this. The idea here is this slot here on the bottom will slide through here. And then we're going to print two of these, which are going to come in on each side. But before we send this to the slicer, we're going to have to make sure that this will fit. So we're going to give it a little bit of a clearance. Uh, and to do that, we're going to go to modify down to offset face. And I'll go ahead and select each of these faces here. So top and bottom, left and right. And I'm going to select each one of these faces and then give them an offset. Uh, and I could do it all in one go. I'm using my 3D connection mouse here to make these selections. So I'm moving it with my left hand here and make the selections with my mouse on the right, um, which normally allows for just sort of a very smooth experience when you're orbiting. However, it doesn't seem to be behaving as it used to be. It used to be a lot smoother and it just feels like a little jittery, a little bit clunky. Um, and I think that has to do, um, or after there was some type of software update, it just never worked the same again. So if anyone knows how to get that smooth motion back, uh, let me know. Because I kind of miss the smoothness I used to have with it. All right, now that I've got all those selections made here, it looks like there's 23. I'm just kind of making sure I didn't miss any edges here or I should say any faces. I'm going to go ahead and enter a distance of negative 0.2 millimeters. Um, I'm going to go with that. You may um, have to experiment if this ends up being a little too tight or a little too loose. You know, you may have to change that up a bit between probably between like 0.1 and 0.3 and to see what gives you the best fit. 
but I'm gonna go with the negative 0.2, click OK. So just to confirm, if I select this top edge here, it's showing 19.15, and if I take my timeline here and I move it back one position back before the offset, you can see that that goes back to 18.75. So verify that that made that just a little bit bigger, which will allow these tabs to go ahead and fit. Okay, I just realized I made a mistake, but rather than editing the video and re-recording, let's just go ahead and fix it here. You see this slot here on the bottom? That should be the other way. That's going the wrong direction. So let's go back to our sketch here. And I'll use my extend tool here again, modify extend going to extend this back up and I I shouldn't have cut the top I should have cut the bottom here so T for trim I'm going to trim the bottom section and so when I do extrude it I want it to look like this all right let's finish that sketch okay didn't quite update correctly so let's go back and edit that extrude feature and we're going to remake that selection here so if I hold command or control and deselect this portion here and then select this one instead and click OK That'll fix that part of it. So that's the way the extrusion should look. And also I wanna make sure that the offset was applied to this section here. So this is 3.4 millimeters wide and that looks correct. So let me check this one, should be 3.4. Remember we made these three so the offset would have made it bigger. And you can also double check by clicking on the offset feature on the timeline and you should see these highlighted. So that shows that that is correct. Okay, to 3D print this, I'm gonna right click here on the top of my browser, go to save as mesh, and as long as all the body visibilities here are on, each of these will be sent. Now I'm gonna print this on my X1 Carbon, so you can see here my application is the Bamboo Studio Slicer. Click OK and Fusion will automatically open up my bamboo slicer and bring these models in. All right, so here's where the cool part happens. So I've got these here as all solid bodies, but I don't want to print them as solid bodies. Uh, I want to increase the number of shells and then I want to have it be just infill shown and get these really cool uh, effects showing just the infill. And we can play around with all the different infill patterns. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is we're going to go to strength and I'm going to increase the number of wall loops and let's do, I'll say maybe do like six wall loops here. And now I'm going to go to the uh, infill option here and I'm going to pick some of these fun ones here at the bottom. You can experiment with all these. Let's say for example, this Archimedean chords here, we're going to need to do one more thing here. So top shells, we're going to bring that down to zero. Bottom shells, we'll go down to zero. We increase our uh, wall loops, which is our uh, perimeters. Um, Bamboo just calls it wall loops here. Some slicers will refer to it as perimeters or outer shell. Now we can go ahead and click on slice plate and you'll see there that you've got you know an increased number of perimeters there. The default of two, it'll just be kind of a little too flimsy. So you want to increase that. And then you get these cool patterns. Now this already kind of looks Christmassy and you can try all different ones here just by coming back and changing this. So another cool one is this octogram spiral. We'll go ahead and slice plate and you can see that as well. Now here's something um, also you can do that's pretty neat. I'm going to go back to my prepare tab here and we're going to change here where it says process. We're going to go from global to objects. We're going to come up here and click the O here, the split to objects. Now you can see we have three different objects here and I can select these individually and give them uh, different infill settings. So go back to, um, go to strength. Now I've got this one selected here. And so let's say we'll leave that one as the octogram. Let's, um, the octogram spiral. Let's click on the second one here and we'll make that one the Archimedean chords. And then we'll click on the third one here and let's make that one the Hilbert curve here. And we can also change the infill setting. So the sparse infill here, some of these will look better uh, with higher or lower infill settings and that's something you can play with. So let's slice this and they should each three have different uh, infills, which is really neat. So you can see here, I've got this guy here, the spiral over here, and this Hilbert curve there. Actually, we'll need one more of this part right here. So let's go back to prepare. Almost forgot to do that. And here I'm just gonna click uh, Control or Command C and Command V to paste it. Let's arrange these. 
That arrange option just puts them a little bit tighter. Let's slice again. And if we want to make this one a separate infill pattern, might as well. I'm going to go back to selecting it here. Again, I'm under um, objects instead of global. And we'll just make that one. How about a good old fashioned honeycomb there? Slice that. All right. And there we have it. Okay, now I'll go ahead and print this. Now I'm not sure if I actually prefer these all the same in film pattern or mixing and matching, but you know, just something you can play around with and see what you like the best. I'm gonna hit print plates here and send this to my bamboo. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something along the way. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Also, check out the links below to some of the resources I have available. I am currently running a Christmas promotion on my Fusion 360 weekly live class. Check the link below to take advantage of it. You can also find links to my online courses as well as my free Fusion 360 Constraints cheat sheet. If you simply like to support me and the time it takes to put these videos together, consider becoming a Patreon member, link below. All right guys, I will see you in the next one.